All right, so now that we have a Ubuntu installation to work with, um, now we're going to install Ruby on Rails, which the process is much different than the Windows installation. This is a little more, it's a little more complicated. You have to do it through the command line. Um, but once you get the hang of it, once you learn a couple commands on the command line, it's really not that scary as it may seem. So we're actually going to use a guide as a reference. Um, this guide is, is how to install Ruby on Rails onto Ubuntu 12.4, which we have 12.10, but it will basically be the same thing. Um, and there's a bunch of different ways to install Ruby on Rails on Linux. Um, we're going to be using something called RVM, which is stands for Ruby Version Manager. Uh, it just allows us to install it and, and gives us a set of commands to work with uh, to install it. So we're going to do that. And so you want to open your command line. It's actually called a terminal in Linux. And we're just going to use the default terminal. Well, don't get scared. Uh, this is, it just, it puts us in our home directory by default, which is, I can show you, if I go to, hold on a second, the home folder. Now this, we are in this folder in the command line. LS, which lists everything, files and folders, is a extremely important uh, command to know and you'll see it lists what it does is just lists everything that's in our home directory we can change directory with CD so if we say CD downloads it switches us to the downloads directory which is here okay and if we say list files nothing shows up because there's nothing in the directory let me see. So you'll see the example. Whoop. What happened? This examples folder does have something in it. So let's. And to go back to the home directory or back wherever you are, it's just cd space and then two dots. So now we're back. So if we go to cd, actually that examples, that's a shortcut. That's not an actual folder um, should be the same thing though. Whoop, said, oh and if you want to go to the, your last command you just click the up button the up key it'll take you through what you've already done and that is a that's not a directory it's a shortcut and you can see if we go in the GUI when I say GUI, it's GUI, which stands for Graphical User Interface. And we have, you'll see the examples folder has an arrow. It's a shortcut, so we can't just treat it like a regular folder. But um, you don't really need, I mean, you do need to know basic commands like lists, how you list the files and change directories. But um, for the most part, we're not going to be doing any much more uh, aside from using RVM and using apt-get. You'll see here the first, the first um, command we need to call is apt get update. And what that, what apt get is, it's a, um, it's a powerful tool. Uh, it stands for advanced packaging tool, and you can use it to download software from the repository, uh, update, remove, um, pretty much anything. So what we're going to do here is just update our package. Um, the apt gate, every, everything that it offers from the repository, all the software from that one small command. Okay, and what sudo means is if we're going to do anything that requires root access, where we need something that uh, the file or folder or whatever the command um, requires root access, by default we have this user called Brad or whatever you put in for your name, which isn't the root user. Um, so if we want to do any kind of root actions or commands, we have to put this sudo in front of it. And it will ask us for our password. So if we do su apt, apt get and then update. 
Actually, let me try it without the pseudo first. So you'll see it says, could not open locked file. Permissions denied. But if we go back and we put sudo, and it will ask us for our password. Ah, uh, shoot. I, it doesn't show you any asterisks like a normal password would. So it's just going through the repository um, and just updating anything that is out of date. All right, so it looks like it, it went pretty quick. Um, so the next thing we want to do is we want to install curl. And what curl is, is it's just a, it's a client that gets files and folders from servers using um, protocols like um, FTP, HTTP. Um, you don't really need to know exactly what it does, just know that you need it. So. We're just going to do another, we're going to, this time we're going to use the install command for apt-get. So we're going to do sudo apt-get install curl. And we want to do yes. Alright, so now we have curl installed. The next thing we want to do is we want to get we want to download the RVM package, so we're just going to we're going to use curl here, and we use the L option. Actually, I can just copy and paste this. I don't know why I'm typing. Um, hold on a second here. Copy. Uh, all right, so that should do it. Okay, so now RVM is installed. We have to exit our shell or terminal or command line, whatever you want to call it, and then go back in. All right. So now let's, RVM has its own dependencies that we need to install. So let's try, let's check it out by doing requirements. Oh. Requirements. So if we click up, push up, it'll take us to our last command. All right, just, it just tells us about what else we need to in order to run RVM which is all right here for Ruby um, so what I'm going to do is just copy all these well this is what it shows us in the text so this is right here um, so what we want to do is install all these dependencies so I'm just going to copy and paste this I don't want to type all that all right, so what this is doing is it's doing another apt get install, and all these are separate um, dependencies, or it's just separate software that we need in order to run RVM and Ruby. So that'll ask you again. Oh, I keep using the wrong password here. So you just want to click yes for any questions it asks. So after this is done and all set, we'll be able to install Ruby. Okay, Ruby is the programming language that Ruby on Rails uses. Um, I'm going to have a an entire chapter dedicated to what Ruby is and basic programming using Ruby. Um, and once we install Ruby, we can install Ruby Gems which I'll also explain Ruby gems. Um, they're basically little um, sections of code that we can integrate into Rails. Rails itself is actually a gem. So that's why we need to install Ruby gems first and then install Rails because it is a gem. So 
now if we go over here it looks like everything went well so now we want to install uh, Ruby so we're just going to do rvm install um, and the latest version of Ruby is 1.9.3 so So that's all set. Next, we want to install Ruby Gems, which we just want to do RVM. We want to do RVM, Ruby Gems, and we want the most current version. Oh, we need sudo. Sudo RVM Ruby Gems. Um, what's going on here? Don't need sudo. Ruby was not found. We just installed Ruby, didn't we? Install Ruby. Oh. Ruby is not a RVM is not a function. It will not work. You need to change your preferences to allow login shell. Sometimes it's not required. Please visit for an example. What? Um. One second, guys. Says I need to allow login shell. Run command as a login shell. Let's try that. All right. Let's try that again. All right. I'm gonna pause the video again. See what's going on. All right, so it looks like I did do the right thing. Uh, I, I clicked the run command as login shell, but I think we have to go back into it, exit and go back in. So, so let's try that again. All right. So now we're using RVM, we're using Ruby. Now we can install the gems. Sorry about that. So we want to do RVM then Ruby gems because gems is now installed. I mean Ruby's now installed and we want the current version. And next we just, uh, what's going on? All right, all right. so installation of Ruby gems is successful. So now we just wanna do, we just wanna install Rails. We should be all set in theory. And this could take a while, uh, so I'm just gonna pause it. 
right, so everything went good. Everything was installed. So you just want to check by just typing Rails and then V. And this says we have 3.2.12, which is the latest version. And then you can also type Ruby to make sure you have Ruby, which is 1.9.3. So uh, Ruby, Rails, and all its components are now installed. 